today is your baptism of fire. If Lieutenant Argeropoulos ever felt responsibility, he feels it now. In the armament shop, his crew is picking up their guns. Now remember, fellas, don't let them get too close trying for a sure kill. Your main job is to bring these airplanes back. You've got plenty of ammunition. Keep them out there at long range. Oh, we know. They've given you an easy hop. Only three and a half hours in and out. What they call a milk run. But you'll remember this first mission. You don't admit it now. You wouldn't show it for the world. But later you find out everybody else felt the same way you did. Flash order from Wing Headquarters. Wing wants three more ships added to the high group. Three more bomb bays have to be loaded. You have to step on it. Positions in the formation chain. doesn't concern Sergeants Kenny and Phil Hulls. Gunners think only of smooth working guns and plenty of ammunition. Ammunition's cheap. Six cents worth of 50 caliber wanged into the cockpit of a Messerschmitt. That's what will bring you home. What did that weatherman say? 30 below over the target? Electrically heated suits. The Air Corps dresses for every occasion. Yes, everything has to be right, brother. Check everything. Every strap tight, every buckle set, everything understood. You get into your flak suit. Mighty heavy material, but it wears well, the man says. A thermos of hot coffee. The uh, joker who brings it says it'll help keep you awake. Hard straps on his throat mic. Over this intercom system, he'll be able to talk to every man in the ship. And they can talk to him. They'll be talking for keeps today. Well, that flare from the tower ought to be along any minute now. There it is. Start engines. The Colonel's already been on missions with seasoned outfits. Today, he leads you on your first. Yeah. of the runway. Easy now, slow. You cut somebody's tail off. Rev her up and ride those brakes hard, Brett. Roger. But you keep your eye on the tower. Take off. The old man leans full on his throttle. At 15 second intervals, you follow. Fit sits down to wait.
Go ahead, Mike. Your deal. Come on, I cut. Oh. Okay. What time are they due back, do you know? Scotty said around 5.20. Gosh. I sure hope they all... Hey, how many are you dealing? I'm in. Oh, sorry. We know, Mike. Everybody's sweating them out. You mean what's coming over those trees, Major? No, that's not them. Just a flock of crows. I was a truck driver on Canal Street, but I never felt like this before. I ride the ambulances. I gotta be casual. You know, carefree and easy, like the dock. And listen, wise guys, talk to us. The ground crew for each ship. We'll tell you how to feel. Okay, here they are. That's the stuff. 17, 18, 19, 20. Here's the old man and Jenny. Yeah, that's your ship, Corporal. You can uncross those fingers now. 627. That's Joe Frischholz. A little hot, Joe, but you're a hot pilot. Kegel in 742. Chalk him up. Here's old Zip in 879. He's got number four prop feather, too. Here's 953 with number two out. And look, Jim couldn't get his bomb bay doors closed either. Huh, Sergeant? Must have laid him right on the nose. Yep. Oh, he says he saw him land right on the MPI. Nice bombing, Steve. That's from me, Pete Provenzale, your navigator. Okay, Phil. Chalk up number one. Nice driving, Captain Art. You sure know your evasive action. Uh-oh. Harry caught something. A 20 millimeter right across his radio. Arge looks at a hole in the horizontal stabilizer. Nothing at all. Hi, Pete. Come on, let's stow these guns and get to interrogation. Yeah, you're feeling pretty cocky. Nobody blames you. It's great to get that first one over with. But this one was pretty easy, remember? You got a lot more to go. Longer ones, tougher ones. Take it easy, boys. Take it easy. Back from the raid comes Major Lewis Nowak, Group Surgeon. Doc flew this first mission to study the physical reactions of men in combat. He didn't have to go, but that's the kind of a doc he is. And today, on the walls of the officer's mess, begins the chronological record of the group's success. Coutre, a German fighter base in Belgium. And he doesn't live there anymore. In the meantime, we find Kenny and Phil cleaning their guns in front of the armament shop. Hello, Captain. Hello, fellas. Well, how was it? You know, Captain, I don't think those Germans like us. Are you ready to go again? Sure. You got to get this thing over. But did you learn anything you didn't know before? Plenty. At home, they told us the Germans made most of their attacks on the tail. Today, most of them are on the nose. Yeah. Most of the time, I had my turret pointed at 12 o'clock. I must have fired a thousand rounds. Let's go all these guns, Ken. All set? Yes, check those guns. You had plenty more use for them the next two weeks. Emden, Kiel, Willemshaven, St. Nazaire, Bremen. And every swastika stands for a Hun pilot that asked for it and got it. days when enemy targets were hidden by weather. So the more energetic of you found relaxation in peaceful combat. While the more studious men discussed tactical chart group like Kenny and Phil, went into the nearby villages to visit the quaint old cathedral, churches and shops in the English countryside surrounding us. Or on days when they were confined near the base, 
The old cathedrals and shops would come out to see them. Hmm. This little shop wants to go home. Meanwhile, back at the kitchen, we find a very unhappy and angry man. Hello, Sergeant Posey. Hello, Captain Gable. What's this? I thought you were a ball turret gunner. I thought so too, sir, but I've been grounded. Oh. Your past crept up on you, huh? Yes, sir. They found I was chef at the Brown Derby in Hollywood, and now they have me in the mess making a cake tonight for the officer's party. Nothing you can do about getting back into combat? I don't think so, Captain. Well, Sergeant, remember this. There are two kinds of cake. One of them's good, and the other one... I'll be seeing. But gals or parties, you're still fighting a war. And you're getting mighty good at it. Nobody knows it better than the sucker who started it. Little Adolf. Well, Sergeant Posting, back in the combat, huh? Yes, sir. How's your manager? Well, sir, you know what you said. There are two kinds of cake. So Posty's back in the air with you. You're blowing factories and power plants a thousand feet in the air. Okay, how about you, Winchester? Go ahead, little excitement. What yeah. happened? I have a little present here for you. What's that, black? Came in the side of the radio room and hit the buckle on my parachute. It fell on the floor. Well, who had this plane? Uh, Phil. Uh, what time was that? Well, it's about uh, 1,600 hours. 1,600 hours. Where did it happen? You know, that's what we're Well, you know, it's right here, just east of Boston. East of Boston. That's right. We'll confirm that. Well, I saw it. I confirmed it. After he fired it, it uh, came down and passed underneath our left wing and exploded right underneath it. Nobody just bailed out. But when you hand out punishment like this, you've got to take some, too. The day you got back from over Villa Couple, just outside of Paris, was plenty rugged. Signal flares. That means wounded aboard. What's tough about it was, you had to bring your bombs back. You couldn't drop them. When you reached the target, you found it closed over by weather. That's an order when you're flying over France. No indiscriminate bombing, just German installations. three hours in, three hours out, under constant attack by over 200 Messerschmitts and Falk Wolfs. He lost men, he lost ships, and couldn't strike his blow. That's rough. Here's Peter Provenzale. Remember him? Arge's navigator? Today he got a 20 millimeter through the leg. Cable shot in two, but some wounded gunner wouldn't quit. He tied them together. <laughs> 